Good evening, ladies, as well as gentlemen. Papa Boris here with some more Hearthstone Arena. Apparently, I'm doing very well with this warrior deck. I forgot all about it. It's been a few days since I played. My girlfriend's parents came into town over the weekend. They are potters, and there's apparently some, like, annual horse show in Madison every year, and, uh, because my girlfriend's mom, like, paints horses on the pots that her stepdad yeah. makes... They sell a lot of pottery there, so they were here for a few days. They slept in our bed, so I wanted. So while I love them very much and they're great people, I'm really looking forward to uh, sleeping in my bed tonight, because uh, sleeping in the five-year-old's bed, uh, so it's a little, a little bit, a little bit cramped. Not my ideal place to sleep for four nights in a row. So I'm in a great mood. One more day of being sleepy and groggy, and then we'll be back to my usual chipper self. We're up against Nature Hoof the Rogue here, and wow, this is not a great opening hand. We are looking to coin a 4-drop on turn 3. Thankfully, she's a slow start. She's not doing anything on turn 1 or 2. But I'm not doing anything either. Ah, Jesus. I didn't armor up. <laughs> ah, that was silly. I mean, granted, it's not, it's not as bad to miss the hero ability with the warrior as it is for some other classes, but boy. Okay, well, here we go. Let's uh, play the Weaponsmith. I'm pretty lucky that she only played a two-toughness creature on turn three. Honestly, that's really, really lucky. If she hadn't done that, I would have had to coin into Death's Bite. And then I could have played this guy for free, so why didn't I do that? Because I wanted this out, but this is the same thing. I'm dumb. I should have just played this Death's Bite. Okay, she backstabs this, and I assume that's a Fan of Knives or a Shiv coming out. No, it's a Harvest Golem, so she's actually going to use the Wicked Knife for that and unfortunately this axe doesn't really do a great job killing that golem novice engineer is not a bad top deck i'll play that and in addition i will play this corsair all right so it's a bit a uh, bit of a tenuous situation here it's not uh the greatest situation i can only play one card per turn so if it's not a good play i'm gonna be in trouble shoot this is bad so now, there's a 3-2 and a regenerating 3-1 out here. Bomb lobber, how well does that work? Not all that well. It'll kill one, and then I can kill the other with my axe, but then there'll still be either the golem 2-1 or um, the 3-2. So really, I can kill this with my axe, play the inventor. Ah, man, I should really just play the bomb lobber. Yeah. Not the greatest use of Bomb Lobber ever, but it'll have to do. Again, I'm lucky she didn't have any faster of a start. If this person had gotten off the ground running, then I would have been in major trouble. So she's got five cards, I have six. She's ahead a little bit because she can clear my board with hers and then play a six drop. So I am incredibly lucky that this is all she did. Honestly, if she was actually going to uh, like play a big six drop, I would have been in way more trouble here. Because I really don't care that much about this thing. Alright, um, here I could play the Shredder, but then I just armor up after that. So there's really no point in doing that. I might as well spend as much mana as I can and put out the maximum amount of board presence. Okay, so again, I'm still, I'd am still i still say that I'm a little bit behind. It's a bit of a touchy situation, but she didn't have anything good on turn 6. Maybe this is still going to be a crappy turn. Alright, so this sucks because she gets a 4-4. Four, four. And another 4-4. Four, four. Ouch! Oh god, that's so bad. Wow, I really wish I could have killed that thing, because that would have uh, saved me all kinds of trouble. And just like that, I am in very bad shape. I pretty much have to do this and this. So I match her pair of 4-4s four with mine. The problem is that she can kill the first iteration of the Shredder, unless, and unless a Millhouse Mana Storm pops out, whatever it pops out will just die to one of her creatures. So now I'm pretty far behind. She gets to clear my board without spending any mana, and she can play the full 8 mana turn. Alright, she's at 17 health, so I could try to burn her out. The problem is that uh, she'll kill me before I can burn her. It's awkward. Cult Master's terrible. The Gnomish Inventor is way too slow. She has up to an 8 drop coming down. Crap. I really needed to kill that damaged golem. Hmm. All right, so what does she have for eight mana and five cards? Healing that guy up could be worse. That could be worse. I can fix anything. And 
And that's not too bad. Alright, well, she has a, just a ton of power, but if I can get rid of this all, I can be okay. Do I have anything in my deck that would actually let me get rid of all this stuff? Not really. Ah, uh, man, this is too slow. I don't have anything that would really help me get rid of things. Let's do this. Um, this. Well, let's freeze that. Shield slam. I would have loved to use it, but I just didn't have enough mana to armor up and shield slam. Okay, this is dicey. But the 2 3, it'll take out her weapon. Oh god. Oh boy. Well, I'm going to lose now. This is this is not going to go well. My I just had a slow start. She had a slow start too, but then she was ahead. If I had gotten some things down in the early game, I could have maybe won this. So she gets to kill this with the last tick of her weapon. And then she just has a lot of power here. I can hit her down to 11, but that's not going to be enough to kill her anytime soon. And I'm also dead to her stuff. Four, seven. Yeah, this is bad. Wow, heroic strike. I could try for it. Four plus four is eight, down to seven. I just can't kill her off. Well, let's see what this gives me. All right. I think we got to go for it, honestly. I'm going to do Korokron Elite. Oh, I'm dumb. I should have definitely attacked with my weapon first. Now my Korokron is taking damage for no reason. That could definitely be a game-losing mistake. But anyway, um, yeah, she's got 4, 7, 8, 9 damage. All she needs is 4 more damage to kill me, which is easy to come by, especially if she has any mechs. This is a free plus 2 right there. So I could very well just die. But 7 health, I mean, Fiery War Axe. No! <laughs> Why does this always happen to me? Okay, I lose. Because I have 7 damage, but she just got the 8 health that she needs to not die. She's taking it pretty cautiously, but I, I can't win. God damn it. Antique heal bot. Oh, she didn't have a way to kill me, apparently, but she had the antique heal bot. Golly, Jesus. Oh, she also has that. That's cute. Well, well played, lady. Well freaking played. Sigh. Alright, well, let's uh, kill this guy. Play a shield maiden and armor up. There's just no way. Because she heals for another 8. Goes up to 23. I've got 5, 8, 12. Still leaves her with way too much health. Well, I do have the board advantage now. So if she doesn't have any way of killing this, I could actually do something. Let's, let's see what she's got going on. Alright, so she does that. Okay. And that's half of her mana gone. What else? No, 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 no! Oh, that's so sad. Too bad. So sad. Well, I could shield slam this thing, or I could use my weapon. I mean, realistically, that weapon's not gonna go on her face. That was a terrible top deck. Unfortunately, this thing is just beyond useless. It could even hurt me. If she kills this, then the dagger would finish off the cult master, and she's got plenty of health. Well, I have to play it. I had no choice not to. All right. What do we got here? Matter Bomber. Nope. Don't hit the Cult Master. Don't. Oh. Okay. Well, there's a chance that Cult Master could actually live. The problem is if this thing dies, um, what's actually going to trigger first? Would the Cult Master die? Oh, she's got the kill for it anyway. Shiv. Damn it. Well, I'm in pretty rough shape here. We've got a 1-3. Eviscerate. Wow, that's bold. Okay, well that's um, that's bad is what that is. So I can run this in, it'll go down to two health, it's not good enough. Heroic Strike, obviously I just die. Why am I even playing? But I mean, there's a chance here that I can hang on for dear life. And okay. So five cards, but if they're all wisps, actually if they're all wisps, no, if they're all wisps, I can play Whirlwind and kill them all, and then I'd win. Deadly Poison, I right, she needs one more damage. 
And that damages. That damages Tinker's Oil. Okay. Well, that was quite an unfortunate game. But, uh, whatever. We made it up to seven wins. And that's that. I still can play. I mean, that's uh, only my second loss. But, uh, it's just frustrating. If I had gotten an opening hand that had anything to play before turn three, I would have been in business. Of course, maybe I screwed up. Maybe if I'd played Death's Bite. Oh, man. If I'd played Death's Bite, would that have worked? Let's see. I would have played Death's Bite, killed her barber, and gotten a free Dread Corsair. But then she would have... She had that Harvest Golem then. Death's Bite works badly against Harvest Golem because the Death Rattle of the Death's Bite triggers before the Golem if the Golem was played second. So yeah, I probably would have lost regardless. QQQ. All right, that's a cool name. Another terrible hand. I gotta keep the three drop though, just in case I get nothing better. But really, it'd be nice to get one of my infinitely many two drops. Thank you, game. Oh my god, it's fantastic. Wow. If I'd got this opening hand last game, I bet I would've won. Well, now if I lose this game, it'll be all a tragic waste. So let's see what QQQ Cry 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 has in store for us. Alright, well, all the two drops are out to play. I'd love to see a coined 2 3 or 3 2. Well, 2 3 is better. I take a bit less damage. Alas, I don't. So, what do you do here? I think I'm just going to play the novice engineer. The um, Blue Girl Warrior dies to Mortal Coil, and there's no point holding, uh, throwing it out when I might be able to use it later for some removal. The Owl obviously would have been a waste. Now, the Fiery War Axe wouldn't have been a bad plan necessarily, but I, mi I might keep that hidden. And uh, get get to kill something better with it. All right, so he cycles a card, and I cycled a card, so it's all good. Now at this point, I think it makes sense to drop the fiery war axe because then I can also play an iron for a grizzly, which is pretty good. No reason to attack him in the face just yet, though. So let's see what he's got. He's um, got a full hand of cards. Basically, could be holding a mountain giant, I suppose. It's not that likely for someone with the coin to do so little. Are you kidding me? Well, that sucks. So he goes up a card here. I could do the Cult Master, but I think I'd actually rather keep my 3-3 three, three around than get a card off of it and replace it with the 4-2. Ouch, that ooze was painful. So he still has 8 cards. He's a card ahead because he got to kill my weapon. He has a coin here still. Oh, this is awkward. Well, I can't silence it and do Death Spite, but if I silence it, it's going to kill my 3-3. So I'm just going to kill it and hope he doesn't get anything good out of it. Let's see. Oh, it was a Stone Cold Bluff. He didn't have any demons. Perfect. Well, I'm sure as hell glad I did that because obviously anything else would have been much worse. I gotta, I gotta remember to use this before playing creatures, though. Although I could do a wacky combo, like play the Owl and the Cult Master, and then use Death Bite to kill the Owl and get a card with Cult Master. I mean, that, that could work. If this thing can get down to one health, that might work as well. Oh, this is interesting. So, I could do it. I could um, kill this with my Pirate, let him drop to one health, then play the Owl and the Cult Master and hit him in the face and get two cards. But really, that just seems dumb. So why don't we instead just play this? And then go for a Shield Maiden. Well, hang on, I could actually play the Cobra. That's tempting, because then if he plays anything big, I'd have already kill for it. But I have already kill for it anyway with my weapon. And this is, you know, five attack as well, so let's just do that. Okay, this looks good. And now this guy, if he lives through the turn, I can do Cult Master and then get the extra card with him off a of Death Spite. He has a ton of cards. He's been playing very slowly all game. Tons of cards. Zombie Chow is not what I was expecting at this stage. Nor was Noitron. Where were all these cards earlier? Wow, I guess I'm just really lucky that he never got anything playable. Huh. Okay. Cool. Well, let's think about the situation here. I can uh, run the Shield Maiden in. And then weapon Tron. Uh, unfortunately, this thing 
stops me from killing the zombie chow, even even though that, that's obviously the card I'd like to hit. But even if I hit the Tron, um, this thing will die to the Death's Rattle. This one will be a 2-2 left over. I actually don't want to silence the Tron, do I? Because then I'd have to hit this with my Death Spite, and then the Tron, or, then my Tron would live. Hmm. I could do the Owl and the Corcron. Let the Owl and the Corcron hit the Tron. Sorry, let the Corcron and the Shield Maiden hit the Tron, and then the Owl hits the... This is, that's way too complicated. Um, all right, I'm going to do this. I don't know if this is the right play. It's the play I'm going to make. I'm going to sneak an extra... Actually, do I really want to play the Cult Master here? That seems dumb. You know what? Let's just keep it simple. We're going to do this and this. Get that stuff dead. Then I'm just gonna play this to kill Mr. Chow. And I'm gonna armor up. Now you might say, Boris, why are you armoring up and not playing a Cobra? The reason is he's playing really slowly, so I think he's got Hellfire. So even though it would have been great to have a Cobra out on the field, I'll settle for having nine powers worth of creatures with a Cult Master backing them up to kill anything he biggie plays, and then also be a little bit less vulnerable to Hellfire. He does have a decent number of cards, seven to my six. And some of my cards are, you know, a bit situational and not so great. So he could still catch up and win this, but if he just plays a big creature and I get, you know, Cult Master plus these two to kill it, I should be fine. Cult Master, throw these at... Ah, he does have Hellfire, wow! Alright! That was a pretty good play on my part. I'm gonna give myself some mad props there. I think a lot of people would have just thrown the Cobra out there. But playing around the Hellfire saved me the Cobra and gave me some health. He finally uses his coin, so he's gonna get a 4-drop here. Is it gonna be... Something good? It is. Alright, well, I'll have to use the Owl here, I think. That seems like the most logical thing. Do I use Heroic Strike or Shield Slam to kill that? I'm gonna just use the Shield Slam. Heroic Strike could be useful against his face. And if I had used Heroic Strike against it, then I would have lost all my armor, so Shield Slam would have taken a while to catch up. Plus, I got this to kill a big thing if I need to. Still, he's doing fine. 19 health is a fair amount of health. If I don't get some good backup here, at some point, I'm going to be in trouble. That's annoying. So he gets to kill my Cobra and live to tell about it. Luckily, though, I get to trade my Owl in for a card with Cult Master. Hopefully I get something good to play besides Cult Master. Now wouldn't be a bad time to get one of my freaking five drops that I got non-stop in the last game. Come on, where are they? All right, I guess that'll do, although I'm not that jazzed about it. Okay, so we have seven, nine, 13 damage here available, assuming nothing dies, which is a bit of a big assumption. He has to kill the Cult Master first. If he kills this first, he gets, he gives me a card. If he has another Hellfire, he drops to 12 health, down to 6, and then if he has an Antique Killbot, because everyone always does against me, then he'll win. But, um, it's, it's anyone's game here. Here we go. That's a card I'd like to have. And what else? Big Dumb Beast. Well, could be worse. Could be a lot worse. Get, oh, where are my goddamn cards? You know what? I'm actually going to go fishing for cards. I know that there's stuff in this deck that is just not coming up. Wow. All right. I would have loved to have this panda earlier so that I could have um <sighs> put the weaponsmith back into my hand. Shit. This is actually getting a little ugly. All right. Let's do this. Let's put it back in the hand. Um, I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna hope that he gives me a card off of it. And I think we gotta go for desperate times here. I'm actually gonna execute this thing. And do I wanna hit the squire with my weapon? Hitting his face seems a bit risky. I'm just gonna hit the squire. He had a really bad turn last turn, so if his turn is sucky again, like where it's just a bunch of vanilla creatures with no taunts and no removal, I could still sneak this win out. I've got 4, 7, 8 damage, plus 4 is 12. I might get a card if he doesn't have a direct kill for the Cult Master and has to go through this guy first. It's dicey though, he's definitely got the advantage here, even though he's low on health, just because my cards all suck. And he's got a full hand. 
Oh my god. Well, it is a common. You gotta figure people are gonna draft it highly, but Jesus. Alright, so now we have to fight fair. He does get to kill this. Is he gonna play Mortal Quell, though, to finish off my Cult Master? Because I need this Cult Master to live. Oh my god, I need it to live. Oh, thank god it lived. Whew. Okay. So we're gonna get another card. Let's kill off the 4-3 here. And get a card. Whirlwind is not the greatest at the moment. Is it worth it to try hitting him in the face? 8 down to 11. It's just... 8 down to 11, and then I have another 8, but it's just not worth it. Uh, okay. Let's play Death Spite. I'm gonna hit this. I'm gonna hit him in the face with that. Armor up. And grab Mr. Shredder. Oh, man. It's, it's looking dicey. Cannot get one of my expensive cards to save my life, so the Cult Master has to go, of course. Maybe I should have traded the Cult Master in for this so he couldn't kill the first iteration of the Shredder. Well, I got a 1-2 out of the deal. The battle card does not trigger, so it does not get copied, so it's just a 1-2. I can kill just about anything he plays, but he still has plenty of cards. And I don't have any, any board presence at all. Yeah, these warrior spells causing me some problems. But I'm, I misplayed that. I should have run the Cult Master into his heal bot. Balls. If only if it weren't for that heal bot, I could have killed him. Yeah, he would have been at, what, 7 health? So all I had to do would have, would have hit him in the face with a rogue strike and I would have won. Ah, uh, that's two games in a row. Gotta come up with a pun for antique heal bot. Antique suck bot? That yeah, doesn't really make any sense. No, not the ogre. That's just no good. Okay. Well... Heroic Strike plus Heroic Strike, that's 12 damage. Let's hit him in the face. Do I want to do it? Do I want to throw him out right now? 12 damage. No, I don't think I want to do that, because what I want to do is I want to try to sneak it by him. Maybe he'll, like, go for one more life tap, and then I can kill him. That's pretty much my best chance of winning. He doesn't have weapon removal, or he would have used it already, and he already played an ooze earlier. To top deck the next one. I'm hoping he just, you know, goes for one more life tap and lets me kill him. Of course, then he also not, has to not play any taunts, but let's see. I could also get a little bit more damage. This is only this is only two mana each. That's so four mana for both of these. Oh my god, please don't play any taunts. Please don't play any taunts. No Sun Fury Protector. No Grizzlies. Okay, good. That's not a taunt. Please, just pass your turn. Oh my god, if that gives him, like, a Void Walker or something. Oh, Jesus. If that had given him a Void Walker or, like, a... What's his face? Shield Bearer? I would have flipped my shit. So, luckily, though, we get to do this and kill him. Ah, <sighs> wow. That, uh... That was a game. That was definitely a game. I can't actually believe I won that, but he really just didn't have much taunt in his deck or much removal. I guess I'm pretty lucky I was playing someone at 7-2 and two without much taunt or removal, because typically you'd expect the high-performing decks to have one or the other, if not both. That heal bot almost caused me a second loss, but thankfully he uh, life-tapped one more time. Without that, I don't know if I would have won. The bomb lobber wouldn't have gone for his face, and then he had, like, he didn't have enough damage to kill me, but... I would have only had one more turn to find that remaining two damage at the most. So yeah, it's a good thing I didn't pop those heroic strikes and hit him in the face the previous turn, because if I had done that, he might not have life tapped. Alright, this guy's name is Double Take. I am going to mulligan the heroic strike, because I got two of them, and having two early on would suck. Plus, I don't really want to use it, plus I have a two drop. Alright, well, I get a couple of two drops. Not second, so I can't do anything on turn one. So we have a 2-drop on turn 2, and then another one on turn 3, and then we start to play the 4-drops. Well, let's see if this guy's got a quick start. So far, no one actually has, but he does. So my dream of actually playing a Shredder on turn 3 off of Mech Warper. Well, still alive by a hair. Let's see if he's going to kill my guy or play something of his. Because he, he could do a Spider Tank right now. He's used his coin to play this. 
But if he has a three mana mech, I bet he'd play it here. All right, totem. Even but he actually didn't have a anything to play after the mech warper. He was hoping for a top deck of uh, a two drop or a three mana mech. I think he made a mistake. I'm kind of surprised at eight two. Someone making that kind of a mistake. Very fundamental in my opinion. You don't want to coin into a two drop unless you're sure you're gonna have something to play the turn afterwards. Especially this, which you'd like to keep around. Putting it out earlier just makes it more vulnerable to fiery war axe and all that stuff. He doesn't have a mechanical yeti or a shredder to play himself. This is a fantastic start. I mean, he's just very slow and he's used his coin. So the fiery war axe is a nice touch here. We get to kill that. We get to kill this. And uh, there we go. All right, this is about as fan fiddly tastic of a start as I could possibly hope for. Tons of creatures. Life's fine. I have a weapon. He's been do putting out no pressure. I can now throw out a cult master if needed. Crackle on a pilot of treader is great. I even get a knife juggler. Oh my goodness. But the only problem with my situation here is that I um. Don't have anything to throw the cult the, my creatures at with the cult master. If I play the core Connolly, he could come back and win by uh, lightning storming. So do I want to do that? Do I want to do that? I play this. It's four, eight, eleven, or nine with the knife juggler down to seventeen. The lightning storms clears my board. Then I've got nothing. I don't think I actually need to play into that. Let's just, let's just pass the turn here and see what he's got. If he lightning storms, it'll be his whole turn. Then I can repopulate with the Korokon Elite. Otherwise, I would have had nothing to repopulate with. He doesn't have it, though. He just plays a Chill Wind Yeti. Oh, my goodness. All right. So he doesn't have a lightning storm. Uh, let's think about this. I could do Korokon and Heroic Strike. That would be 3 plus 4 is 7. 11. 11 plus 6 is 17 damage. Doesn't quite kill him. The safer approach is to play the Cult Master and throw at the Yeti to get more cards. What is he going to play next turn? A Fire Elemental, probably, because he doesn't have Lightning Storm. Hmm. All right, let's do this. Unfortunately, my Knife Juggler missed its mark. Panda, huh? I don't think that actually is going to help me, though. Whirlwind is also not helpful. Alright, do I want to play the panda here? To replace the cult master with the panda? Sure. I mean, the alternative is just to make some armor, which would make shield slam better, but I might as well. Get the extra knife fling, and replace a 4-2 with a 3-2. So he plays fire elemental, kills the knife juggler. Then I have 4-8. He doesn't actually have fire elemental. Wow. He's playing this thing, and a hex on a knife juggler, which came out of a piloted shredder. Good lord. This guy has the worst draw of all time. I am staggered by how bad his hand is. So he's got, I've got three plus four. Seven plus four is 11 damage, not quite enough to kill him. So let's just, I don't know. Keep it, uh, you know what, hang on a minute. Let's do this. I'm just going to kill this thing. Um, I'll play the Corcron and just hit him in the face for seven. I feel like that's a pretty good way to hedge my bets. So sure, I lost the heroic strike damage, but I have good board presence and um, got an owl to get past taunts. I have a cult master if I need it. Cult master plus whirlwind would let me get a card off of this frog. Okay, looks like he's fishing for spell damage. Doesn't find it. Finds a taunt totem. Does he have a lightning storm here for me? Doubt it. He would have played it earlier if he'd had it. This is from the left side of his hand. He plays a Dark Iron Dwarf. Okay. Let's see. I can ta silence this and hit him for seven, but now I don't actually have the way to kill him anymore. Uh, I could play Cult Master and Whirlwind. So I can Owl this, Cult Master, Whirlwind. It kills the Frog and the Owl. Gives me two cards. Damage is down to three, then I trade my guy and get a third card. Sure. I mean, if I can't kill him, I might as well do this. Oh, 
So let's kill off my own frog and owl. And kill this off. And hit him for four. Okay. Probably I'm being a little bit overcautious, but given how weak his whole deck has been this entire game, I doubt one top deck's going to make a difference. A lightning Bolt and a Cult Master that's already been damaged to one isn't the scariest thing in the world. Kizan Mystic doesn't really matter at all in the slightest. And is he going to give these things taunt? Because it's the only thing I can see mattering. He is, as a matter of fact. All right, so he gets to live another day. All right. Um, this does not quite let me kill that. Play this and this. Okay. So how do we do this? I think um, that, that, and this. Okay. So we're threatening lethal. He's the best he could muster was crappy creatures and giving them taunt. Let's see if he top decked a way out of this situation. Storm and Champion is not gonna save him unless he's got shield bear or something. Well, that wouldn't have saved him either. All right, sorry, I probably screwed it up terribly, but we win is the point, so hooray. Did I miss a combo with the Shield Maiden? Could I have won if I'd played her and then Shield Slammed? Uh, maybe, sorry, I forgot if I missed that. I forgot to look for that interaction. But okay, we are done with that and up to nine wins. Not too bad. Like it is always the case, Black Rock Mountain, I've started off doing pretty well and I'm sure it's going to get more terrible from here. This is actually my second time playing Warrior in Black Rock Mountain, while I still have never played Hunter, Mage, Paladin, Rogue, or Shaman, so I probably should have picked Rogue. But I'm going by what I feel like playing now. I'm not necessarily trying to do one of everything anymore, though I will eventually. Okay, let's keep the two drop, get rid of the heroic strike that I don't want to use early on. Dylan Sama. Dylan's AMA, that's a terrible name. All right, so we have two and three and maybe removal if, if it's needed. No need to coin out that Bluegill Warrior, of course. That would be very silly against a rogue. I'd be throwing away a coin and a card. So. I am going to play the Bluegill Warrior here. Because the alternative is to sit around and do nothing or to waste my coin. Now, either she has to dagger and waste her turn to kill this and go up a card. Or she kills it with the Stalker, but then I can coin into the Weaponsmith and get my card back. Of course, then she's going to get to play a 3-drop. Okay, looks like she's going to make the dagger. Okay. Could do a heroic strike to kill this. And just pass the turn. I think what I'm going to do instead, though, is go for the inventor. The inventor survives against this and the dagger. And then I can play the weaponsmith to finish this thing off the following turn. That's the plan at any rate. I guess I haven't really been doing that well. I had a 9, a 6, a 5, and a 6. Well, that's pretty good. That's nothing less than 5. What did she do to kill it? Backstab, and then the Stalker. Okay, and then a ton of stuff. Alright. Do I Whirlwind to kill off these things? Leaving me with them nothing else to do. I could play the Cobra, I guess. Or do I play this, kill the Fairy Dragon, let her trade one of them in, plus her Dagger to kill my thing? That seems pretty crappy. What's Wait, no, if I... What am I talking about? Oh, yeah, if I Weaponsmith, I kill one. If I play the Shredder, I don't get to kill anything. Um... All right, let's try this. It seemed like that was worth it, but I don't know if that's correct. Now, if she plays something big, I'm going to regret that I threw out the Cobra like this. Alright, she trades the Bandito for it, plays a Drake, which could be worse. God, I really want to play Heroic Strike to kill this and the Shredder, but I can't. Still can't. Damn it. I could play the Shredder, which can kill that, but then the Fairy Dragon will do it. So, this sucks, basically. I am gonna hit that with my weapon, let her Drake kill my Weaponsmith if it wants to, and then I can finish it off. Or she's gonna play a Backstab powered up by Spell Damage to kill this for zero mana, which would suck. 
But next turn I can play the Shredder. Damn it, there it is. I can play the Shredder and Heroic Strike. Oh, she's gonna freeze it. Ah, interesting. Well, I see. So she's starting to just basically race me out. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna go to the hair's edge here. We're going down to nine health. She could theoretically kill me this turn, but I do have five health back here, and I think it was worth it for the board presence to uh, take that damage. Let's see what she's got. Two eviscerates would actually end the game. Alright, she's not going for the throat, which is good, I suppose. You gotta do what you gotta do, so let me actually see what I get from the Shredder first. Shoot. <laughs> Makes me wish I'd played Heroic Strike first. Because, as it is... Uh, my Pyromancer now gets to die to her dagger, which sucks. Okay, well, anyway. Um, she's gonna kill this. She's got a lot of cards to my nun. She has plenty of health. I have weapons for removal, which are limited, because, of course, I'm already down so low. Is that a shiv? It is a shiv, so that's unfortunate that I didn't heroic strike first. But, I mean, I wasn't gonna play around Pyromancer popping out of there. It's definitely looking bad. Oh, it's looking real bad. So I can kill this guy, but this guy doesn't die. Okay. Gotta do what you gotta do. I need to get as much board presence as I can, even though it means leaving myself at death's range. So five would have made a big difference. It would have made me not die to eviscerate, but I had to get as much board presence out as I could, or it was like throwing the game away anyway. So three health. Sinister Strike would win, Nightblade wins, Eviscerate wins. All these things do not require her to get past the taunt. She has a silence for the taunt. Tremendously increases her odds of things that could win. Wolf Rider, Deadly Poison, just about anything. But I feel like that was a necessary risk to take, because not only does this give me some board presence, but it might give me some cards. Alright, so she shivs herself, which means she has the Eviscerate, or else she wouldn't have done that. Other than, I mean, if she was going to choose a shiv, she might as well have... Yeah, there it is. Alright, well played. So, that's it. Kind of awkward ending time. It's too early to end the video here, but uh, it's not really enough time to play much with the other deck. I guess we'll just draft a new deck, maybe play one game with it, and that'll be that for this video. So if you want to leave now, I won't hold it against you. Thanks for watching. Please like and or subscribe on your way out. Let me upgrade my stats sheet. Woo! And let's see what our prizes are for nine wins. Hey, that is fantastic, actually. I mean, usually you don't get this much for nine. So this is 130, this is 285 gold. Spectacular. Okay, what pack do we get? A pop! A golden rare. 100 dust. Hey, it's an extra dust. Unfortunately, that was a normal pack besides the prevalence of rares. Okay, I'm looking for Major Shaman for my next run because I got some daily quests for that. There's Mage. Perfect. Let's do it. Uh, this is a bit of an awkward first pack. We'll take the Mystic. Ah, Cult Master can be so good. You know, I've been really blown by this Micro Machine before, so we'll just take the Cult Master there. And I will take a Boulder Fist Ogre here. We're gonna play for the end game here. Abusive Sergeant or Dark Iron Dwarf? <laughs> we'll take the Dwarf. Although I'm sure some people would have taken the Abusive Sergeant. Here, I'll pause for a moment and grab a one drop instead of taking another dwarf. And we'll take the mech warper, which is nice. Kona Cold is excellent. Force tank max or duplicate? Let's grab the force tank max. Let's, let's go for that solid, solid end game. We'll take the snow chugger, which is just a ridiculously good card. Here, it's all junk. Uh, I don't want this abomination. The assassin could be a decent finisher, but I'm already looking to have a decent endgame. I don't want this if it's one of many endgame cards. We'll take the Young Priestess for some early drops, even though she sucks. Bomb Lobber is Redonkatonk. This is probably the best card here. Flame Cannon, of course. Second Cone of Cold 
or the Trog. I mean, there have been times where I've wanted to have more than one Kona Cold, but you can also end up with too many spells. I'm going to take the Trog. It's just a, such a solid 4-drop. Okay. Arcane Missiles or the Warrior? They're both a removal. The Blue Glue Warrior is a bit more reliable, so we'll take the Blue Glue Warrior. If you're holding a dragon, this is a new thing. Gain plus one plus one. I don't have any dragons. This is probably just a junk arena card anyway. I will take the mirror entity. There is some secret synergy out there, and um, it's a good card to play sometimes. It really can trip up your opponents. Let's go for this over that ghoul, because I hate the ghoul. Ah, another one of these guys? Now I'll take an apprentice. That can be useful. Ouch! This is bad. Guess we'll take him. I don't want Jeeves. Soot Spewer is a fantastic card. A 3 3 for 3 with spell damage is nice. Flame Cannon number 2 or Shredder number 1. I don't actually have any mech synergy here apart from the mech warper. I do have a lot of mechs, but no Mr. Tinkers or anything just yet. Flame Cannon can be limited though because obviously there are times where the opponent has lots of creatures out and it's not useful. Or it's just it does, you need to go for the face and it can't. I'm going to take the Shredder. That could be a mistake. Kona Cold number 2 over these random 2 drops? Sure. Arcane Explosion. Well, I do have some spell damage here, so I'm going to grab it over the card drawer. I've already got card draw with the Intellect and the Cult Master, so some more removal would be nice. Snow Chugger, I don't, I've already got a lot of twos. Let's just take the more card draw. The more card draw. Kona Cold, I got two of these things. Do I take a Junk card or a third Cone of Cold? Let's take the Kona Cold, everybody. See what the hell happens. More buffs, more cards, or more taunts. Let's go for the buff. I really wouldn't mind some endgame here. It started out with a lot, and then it just tapered off. Dragon's Breath. Uh, you know what? Over this loot hoarder, yeah, I'll take it. It's expensive damage, but it might be necessary. And here, we gotta grab a Fell Reaver. Oh boy, more Fell Reaver antics. Who can get enough Fell Reaver? Not me. Alright, that draft, um... You know, I'm gonna just say it sucked, because there were no fireballs, polymorphs, or flame strikes, all of which are common cards that I just didn't see. There's no blizzards here. We got Cone of Cold, which is like the budget man's blizzard, I suppose. I have a Soot Spewer, which can make the Cone of Colds better. But with those, the Arcane Explosion and, and other cards like that, I feel like this deck is going to be inconsistent, and it just lacks the raw power that you expect a mage deck to have. So I'm going to keep this. I think it's the right play to play it on turn one. Make the mage kill it on turn two. It's worth it to go down a card in order to stop her tempo. Of course, there's always the possibility she was just going to pass turn two anyway, and she gets a free card. Okay. Well, that changes things. Actually, no, it doesn't. It doesn't change anything at all. I am going to still play this. Because I got nothing to do on turn two. If she wants to run her zombie chow into this, I'll just ping the chow and get my card back. If she wants to ping it, slowing down her tempo, I'll play flame cannon and kill the zombie chow. Sucks to use flame cannon against a one drop, but zombie chow is a good card. Okay, she chooses to take the bait. Possibly because she had nothing better to do. Flamethrower that thing. Alright, let's see what she's got on turn 3, because if I play this and it dies, that sucks. But if this actually lives, Kona Cold could be useful. Hmm, this thing is probably going to run into my Suit Spear and kill it. I could play the Panda, which isn't using my mana efficiently, but she runs this in, then I can Kona Cold. But the problem is, what if she plays and I don't want to use Kona Cold? Yeah, I'm just going to play this. She runs in, she pings it, it's half her mana. Then I can play the Panda and ping it back. It's not great, but this deck is not great, so I don't think I'm going to have that many, like, <laughs> barn buster openers. Uh-huh, so I get the worst of all worlds here. Okay, we have to coin into the lobber and just content ourselves with only killing one of these creatures. Alright, kills the 2-4 rather than 2-3, which I guess is good, so that she, if she runs in and pings, I have nothing left to finish off. I can use all my mana. To do what? Nothing? Draw cards and ping. Draw cards and panda. It's not looking great. I didn't get much endgame. I got the Fell Reaver. I got the Ogre. Wish I'd taken the Assassin, honestly. Arcane Missiles. Alright. Hopefully they don't all three hit this. Good. So she does have to throw the Berserker at it. But this Yeti is just a menace. Frostbolt. Okay. Clockwork Gnome. How helpful are you? Not very. Drink with me, friend. Okay, so the Yeti kills the panda, 
and is left with two health. Kona Cold plus Arcane Explosion will finish off the Yeti. So will Kona Cold plus Ping. I mean, I got possibilities. Oh jeez. She doesn't have enough mana left to ping it. But this does stop me from using Cone of Cold, because obviously I don't want to damage this thing to put out another Grim Patron. Uh, what if I did Cone of Cold? It would make a Grim Patron, then I Arcane Explosioned. That nah, doesn't work. <laughs> no. Okay. So let's do this. Um, I can actually Arcane Explosion and Ping to finish off this Yeti. But screw it. Let's just throw this out there. So she can use the Yeti to kill my apprentice, she can ping to kill that, and I've got these Cones of Cold and Arcane Explosion, which is just the most terrible hand ever. Unless she plays out a bunch of crap that all dies to it. Alright, there's Arcane Missiles number two or three. Luckily, two of them hit my face. Alright, is she actually going to trade the Yeti into the Gnome? She's not. Okay, good. So the Gnome gets to live a little bit. So we, um... Cone of cold. We explode. I'd have loved to get plus one health on this so it wouldn't die to ping, but it was not to be. Alright. It's not looking good. Card wise, I'm okay, but my cards are so bad that it's just awkward. She has two cards and a spare part. I also have two cards and two spare parts. There's a Boulder Fist Ogre. Who wants to bet me that's going to eat a Fireball or a Polymorph? Okay, she's been holding on to these two cards for a long time and she did nothing last turn. High odds, that's what she's got. She could also have Flame Strikes. Then that's great because this thing survives those in high style. But uh, if this gets Fireball or Polymorph, I just got a top deck. My Fell Reaver, I suppose. And what else do I have? Do I have anything else that's big? I have some other big thing. I just forget what it was. Oh, what what huh, look, it's a Fireball. Wouldn't you friggin' believe it? Does she have a kill for this? No, okay. Wait. There's no reason to play my Bluegill Warrior here. I'm not gonna kill her anytime soon. Might as well hold on to this for removal because I definitely might need it. It's an awkward situation. That's for sure. Fell Reaver could win me the game here. She only has four cards. Unless she draws a bunch of cards, she's not going to be able to fatigue me before I die. Water Elemental. That's another card I never saw. There's so many cards that are good that mages have that I did not ever see. Okay. Well, that's going to kill my 3-3. Three, three. Oh, hey! That is a good top deck. And I am very glad, by the way, that that wasn't an abusive sergeant because this body makes a big difference. Now, if she has a Polymorph or Fireball... Or Flame Strike. She doesn't want to use them against just a 4-4, but on the other hand, it might be really good to just deal damage every turn or kill whatever she plays. Alright, waiting on Fell Reaver. I don't know what else I have that I really care about. Okay, she gives me a good target for the Bluegill Warrior. She seems to have a lot of removal. She doesn't want to use against this dwarf. That's all fine and good. Reckless Rocketeer. Is that worth playing here? Hmm... This is the question. I mean, it is 5 damage, which is a lot. It's also easy to kill. This might bait out a Flame Strike. If she had Frostbolt or Flamethrower, she would have used it. So anything that she could kill this with, she could have killed this with. Dealing 5 damage makes no difference. My deck is terrible at burning. It has no Fireballs or anything. I'm actually going to hang on to this. I think I might need it as removal. If she did play something with 5 health, I really just want this to kill the thing so my dwarf can, can do the damage. If I play this, and then she flame strikes, and then plays a 5 toughness, toughness thing, then I'm totally boned. Alright, she top decked a card. Faceless Manipulator. Not the greatest top deck of the century, but it is a body. So, alright, we get some cards. That's good. The Trog is actually really good here. Dragon's Breath, interesting. Let's see, if I play the Rocketeer, five plus four is nine down to 10. Dragon's Breath deals four down to six. Oh man, I don't think that's smart. I think what's better is this. So I replaced my four hitter with a three hitter, but it's got more health. She seems not to have anything going on up here. So if I can just Ploink through a little bit of damage and finish her off with this stuff. Granted, this is over two different turns. I could uh, I could end up being okay. Alright, she makes a Desperado play. This is obviously not exactly what you want to do with your life. 
Um, let's just keep it simple. Let's freeze it. Kill it. Play the wolf and hit her for four. I'm not ever, ever by the way, planning on this being re reduced. I was just okay with taking a four damage for five mana spell, which is awful. Because if you will recall, Fireball deals six damage for four mana um, without having any stipulations. If, if two minions die, this is... Actually, if one minion dies, this is still worse than Fireball. If two minions die, it's still worse than Fireball. And yes, she did have that Flame Strike. Okay, well now that she used up the Flame Strike, I think I can play this. Because she didn't have any way to kill my 4-3, so she probably won't have any way of killing this either. And I am actually not going to play this Mystic. It's not because I am thinking about stealing one of her secrets. I don't care about that. It's just because I think she has another flame strike. She hasn't played any removal, but she keeps not playing anything, which suggests lots of mass removal. So I want to put her in a position where she has to use her flame strike to kill this. Yep, look at that. Oh my god, that's two pro plays in one day. There was a time I played around the Hellfire, and there I used the... I correctly read around the flame strike situation. Okay, so she has a 3-3, which is annoying because it kills this, kills this. I'm going to have to use Dragon's Breath. Do I waste the potential of stealing a secret? I think so. This is a harder hitter than the Mech Warper. Damage is significant. She would have played secrets if she had them, so I'm, I'd only be saving this for a top deck secret. Um, big game hunter. All right, good. That would have actually killed. That would have killed the fel, the fell reaver, which is still here and it could still win the game for me if this isn't the polymorph. Ancient mage. Um, sure. So why not go for the face? Well, it could have done that. It could have done gunnered out a seven and put her in under some pressure. But I feel like it was safer to do this. And I'm not, like, screwed if I don't steal the win with a kill. So I figured it was worth going for a shot. So now this will kill off my 2-3 or my 2-5 with the help of a ping. And then I got two damage here that she has to address. Another water elemental is pretty good. Oh, God. Swap its attack and health. Ah, very nicely played. So now I'm actually in a bit of trouble, but she is out of cards. So if I can get Fell Reaver at some point here, I'm going to be okay. Mere Entity. Hmm. Not exactly what I was hoping for, but I guess it'll do. Do I ping her or this Elemental? I'm going to ping her. I think every bit of damage counts. She's not going to get down to fatigue like I am, but... If I can get her down to 8, then the one hit of the Fell Reaver kills her, which I think is pretty significant. She also has a secret. Alright, so my Mystic could have stolen a secret. This could be Mirror Entity, in which case, if I do get Fell Reaver, she's going to get it back and kill it and then win the game. Pilot of Treader. Well, I have no choice. I just have to play it. It is the Pilot of Treader. The Mirror Entity. God damn it. Oh, man. That sucks. I needed this like a turn earlier. So now I'm in a lot of trouble. She has this. I'm almost dead. Fell Reaver is going to drop too late. I'm going to die before it can actually go. She has another secret. Wow, she actually had two secrets, but they were all at the blast third of her deck. Lightwell. That's not what I was hoping for. No, ma'am. Oh, my God. Crap. She kills it. Okay, I got a few turns to find Fell Reaver. This then has to not be mere entity i'm not gonna cone of cold this because i got a bit of damage to spare she plays another creature i copy it then i cone of cold i attack her with the creature i copied and maybe win the game that's the plan so she has to play another creature for me for this to work all right she's not playing it either because she's playing around mere entity or because this is a fireball or a pyroblast or something like that so let's see what i got if i get fell reaver and she copies it with mere entity i can actually um Wow. This is too expensive to play alongside Cone of Cold. Shit. If I play that, I lose. And if it's Mirror Entity. But if it's not Mirror Entity, then I want this out here. <sighs> okay, it wasn't Mirror Entity. If it's Vaporize or Ice Armor, I'm really screwed still. Also, she can kill me now with a Fireball. Wow, that was a dumb game. But just goes to show how bad my deck is. She had just nothing good at all, but I still couldn't win. All right, so the arcane missiles hit me a bunch. 
I guess that means she doesn't have a fireball. She doesn't. She does not have fireball. She concedes. That wasn't ice armor or vaporize either. Wow. Well, what a game. So we apparently have one of the worst decks of all time. And we're going to try to squeeze on by on the power of it being mage. Um, helping us get some wins. So thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like and or subscribe, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.